Hey my friends, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about how to choose your first hand pen. Uh, and there's a lot of very, very strong opinions on which brands are better, which type of steel is better, what tuning style, sharp borders, soft borders. There's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of people with very intense convictions about what is the best type of hand pen. Um, so I want to do a video talking about what I look for when I'm purchasing a pan. Um, and this is not an advertisement for any particular maker. I do help out various makers uh, creating content and doing um, performances with their instruments. This has nothing to do with any particular maker. I just want to talk about what I look for when I'm searching for the right sound for my style of playing. This is simply what I prefer. You may like something else. So it's really up to your ear and your heart and your own judgment uh, what works best for you. But I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can look for that will help you choose a quality instrument and have one that will last you a long time and keep you satisfied for more than a couple months. So let's take a look at, at some of those factors. So one of the first considerations when looking for a hand pan is material. Once you've found a couple makers that you connect with the sound of the instrument, you want to investigate what material they're using. Typically hand pans use raw steel, nitrated steel, or stainless steel. There are some makers investigating uh, non-steel, like copper, bronze, things like that, uh, and also chromed instruments as well. But typically nitrated steel, raw steel, and stainless steel are 90% of the market. Each of those types of instruments has a different tonal quality. And obviously, depending on the maker, depending on the tuning, they're gonna sound different. So two nitrated instruments from different makers are gonna sound very, very different, even if they use the same shells. Um, so it's really, there's a lot of factors that go into the ultimate sound of an instrument. But in general, nitriding creates a more ceramic sound. Uh, rather than sort of plunky steel, it has more of a more of a ceramic feel to it. So I'm going to show you a couple examples on four different types of steel, just so you get an idea of what each of them sounds like. This first one is a Godin in a custom scale, and this is a nitrated pan. This next instrument is a Handromeda handpan from Brazil, and this is raw steel. So unlike the previous instrument, this hasn't gone through a nitriding process, which changes the tension in the steel and also adds some rust resistance to it. So this is raw steel, it's been painted. This is also a nitrated steel. This is a Rav Pan F Pygmy. Uh, but this nitrated steel has a very different feel and it's been coated on top 
uh, with a brass. So the next two instruments are a complete departure from the sound of the other ones. This is a stainless steel Sonido de Mano travel pan, and this is stainless with a chromed top. So it has a very particular sound, and because of the chrome and the tuning as well, particular overtones are a lot more prominent in this instrument. Um, but you'll hear the difference between nitrided, raw, and stainless very easily. This one is a D Amara or Celtic and is a non chromed stainless steel. Once we've decided what type of steel suits our playing style, we're able to look at the other features of the instrument. Um, again, stainless has a long sustain. It has very bright and clear harmonics usually. And for some people's playing style, that's perfect. For other people, they like the shorter sustain of some of the heavily nitrated instruments like the hung. Very short sustain, but very clear, um, crisp sound to it. One of the things that I look for in instruments oftentimes is shoulder tones. Not all makers tune them. Um, sometimes they're tuned by accident, sometimes they're close. But when the shoulder tones are tuned, you're able to use a percussive slap on the edge of the center note to get an extra tone. Um, on this particular sonido de mano, there's a very clear particular example it's an A and then the fifth below it. This isn't necessary but it adds to the wholeness of the instrument. Um, so if you're somebody who likes to use those sort of percussion slaps looking for tuned shoulder tones might be a useful thing. So another factor to consider is note stability. Uh, when you're picking an instrument, you want to find one that is sensitive to your touch, but doesn't blare out easily. Uh, and blaring is a term they use when they're talking about a strike that makes the instrument almost cancel itself out. Kind of like the sound of when someone hits a steel drum really hard and it makes that almost like a squeak noise. Um, some instruments and in some styles of tuning lend themselves more to notes that blare very easily. Um, so if you're looking for an instrument that has no blaring, you want to find something that has pretty even stability throughout. Even something that's not super well tuned 
if it's evenly out of tune, it could sound good. Um, ultimately, the note stability really determines the quality of the sound, and it often determines the sustain of a note. If you have two notes that are negatively crossing each other out or blaring very easily, you're not going to get the same tonal quality as one that's very clear. There are certain makers, of course, that really try to make their notes as stable as possible. Um, so for heavy-handed players, nitrated pins, or makers that focus on creating a really rock-solid stable note might be a good choice for you. So another quirky, uh, interesting thing to look for in an instrument is a bloom. Some people like this, some people don't. I personally prefer an instrument that has a really good bloom to it. Um, and a bloom is when you're hitting the center note. It's usually activating the octave and the fifth. And for people who are doing sort of meditative playing or playing that has a little bit less movement to it, having that blooming note really allows you to build the sound and create a soundscape in a different way that something like a hung does. A hung has a very distinct sound in a very um, defined timbre to it, but instruments that have that bloom really fill out a composition. So it's definitely something important to consider when you're searching for the perfect instrument. Another really important consideration is the type of material and where you're going to be playing it. For people who live near the ocean, for people who live in very humid places, uh, a raw steel instrument might be a little harder to maintain than something like a stainless instrument or a nitrated instrument. The nitrating process changes the tonal quality like we talked about before, but it also adds some rust resistance to that instrument. Uh, whereas stainless is very resistant to rust, and powder coated, of course, is, is pretty much indestructible rust wise, unless you scratch it. Um, but stainless, powder coated, and nitrated are different in how you're taking care of them. But the type of material and what the maker recommends for care are a really important factor. Another thing to consider as well is how much sustain do you want? Uh, people don't necessarily like sustain. I prefer sustain. I prefer the bloom, like I said, and I prefer a good amount of sustain. But there are players who are very fast who feel that it makes whatever they're composing very muddy. Um, so finding an instrument that's a good balance of sustain and clarity can be important when looking for an instrument. So all of these are just my opinions and my preferences. You might have completely different views, and that's totally okay. But I think it's important when we learn something that we share it with the community so that we're all better informed. So my final closing advice to you is to really listen to a bunch of different makers. You know, five, six, ten years ago, you had a very small selection of people who were making quality instruments. Nowadays, there are hundreds and hundreds of smaller makers, along with the very well-known makers that have been around for, you know, 10, 15 years, who are making these instruments at a quality level that's way beyond what it was even five years ago. So just because they're not a very well-known maker does not mean they're not making a quality instrument. So ask questions of people online, you know, listen to a lot of music that people are playing on them, and find one that resonates with you. Again, people have very, very strong opinions about makers, about steel, about tunings. Really find what you connect with and make a choice yourself. Um, definitely seek out advice of players who own those instruments if you want to know a little bit more about the quirks and idiosyncrasies of those creations. One final point. Even makers who are very well known, very well established, sometimes don't make the most amazing sounding instruments. All of these are handmade. So you can expect a level of quality in all makers, and you can kind of see and hear that in what they produce in general, but every instrument's gonna have its own character. So when you're purchasing an instrument, make sure you hear it 
first. Pretty much any maker that's worth purchasing from will provide you audio of that instrument before they send it. Because it's super important that you hear it first and you make the decision that that one sounds in tune, has all of the features that we talked about, and will work for your playing style. Do not buy an instrument sight unseen or not listened to, because oftentimes you will regret that. One more point too, you don't need to spend $4,000 anymore. There are makers that are making wonderful instruments for, you know, $1,200, $1,300, $1,400, up to obviously $4,000, $5,000, even $6,000. But for what you want, especially if you're just getting started, picking an instrument in the one to $2,000 range, you can get a really high quality instrument that you're gonna be satisfied with and you're not gonna to wanna to move on from right away. Um, what I started on was, it was an okay instrument, but in order for me to progress in my own playing, you know, seven, eight years ago, I, need, I needed to move on from that and, you know, get to know other instruments. So listen very closely, pick a scale that resonates with you, try them out if you can, and ask questions of people who have them. Because the opinions of others are freely given, but oftentimes people with those opinions haven't tried the things they're talking about. So. Stay well, friends, happy searching, and I hope this is useful for you when you decide to get your own instrument. I'll talk to you soon.